Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat, which is the Tagalog for good morning to everyone. I was born and raised in Quezon City, which is just a few miles from here. Aloha! I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, one of the, fifth, the 50th of state of the United States of America. We, we are, are a bi-national bi couple. couple. My four-year-old daughter came up to me one day and said, Mom, I figured out who I am. I said, well, tell me. I am half Filipino, I am half Chinese, and I am all American. So she thought. For 70 years, I've been telling my friends who asked me, I am pure Chinese. And then, four years ago, my son calls me and he said, Dad, I took my DNA test. Guess what? You are half Viking. You are half Scandinavian. You are half Northern European. Oh, excuse me, but it's not showing. Hang on. I don't know who my dad is, but I know who my father is, Abba Father. Well, I also took my genome exam, my DNA, just to dispel the idea that I am part Italian or Spanish because of Espinelli. Well, the results came. I'm 71% East Asian, 25% Guam and Polynesia, and there's 4% unknown. So that must be the Italian. So you know a little bit about our background, but now please join us as we go through our paper. We're going to be kind of speeding through, so I hope you have our chapter open, and we're going to start, we're going to actually read through it, because there's a lot here to cover, very rich from what we got from our survey respondents. So we're going to start right there at the abstract. Follow along with us, please. Binational mixed marriages, contributions and challenges affecting ministry among the diaspora academic community, represents the reflections by 48 spouses of binational marriages from 20 countries who are staff of International Student Ministries, ISMs. The responses to the five open-ended questions underscored the blessings and identified the challenges of an international and intercultural marriage in relation to ministry among international students. The strong consensus is that the unique experiences and the context of a binational marriage provide an added value for ministry with the diaspora academic community. Our introduction. When we received the official invitation to present a paper on hybridity and mixed marriage, we wondered how broad a topic this might be. To get a sense of the scope of the parameters of the subject, we went to the researcher's primary trove of information of prior work, the internet search engine. Sure enough, the breadth of hybridity and mixed marriage is underscored by a variety of results subdivided into groupings of mixed marriage, 385,000 entries, mixed marriage with a hyphen, 70, 771,000, hybridity and mixed marriage, 449,000, and hybridity and mixed marriage with a hyphen, 6,080,000 entries. Rather than wondering what to prioritize, select, and focus on from the myriad perspectives of, on uh, mixed marriage, we decided to comply with our consultation sub-theme of exploring new horizons. Therefore, we chose to simply limit the design of our paper to align with this consultation's emphasis on mixed marriage in the context of diaspora and Missio Dei, with a singular emphasis and exploration of the potential added value and implications of a binational mixed marriage in relation to ministry among international students and their academic community. Thus, our refined title is now Binational Mixed Marriages, Contributions and Challenges Affecting Ministry Among the Diaspora Academic Community. The approach of this paper is not to summarize or draw ex from existing research on mixed marriages, which is generally associated with interracial or interreligious unions, but to glean from personal reflections and perspectives from a survey of international student ministry staff. We surveyed 70 spouses 
and we got a response of 48 coming from 20 countries, and that is a 67%, 69% return, which is very encouraging when you do surveys, okay? Uh, the results of the survey are presented then. It's an initial and preliminary self-evaluation and assessment that could stimulate a more expanded and in-depth study in the fascinating subject of uh, dynamics between international marriages and ministry among international students. The survey results could be of particular interest to ISM staff of campus ministries, churches, mission agencies, and their volunteer co-workers, and also have a binational marriage and family. The next slide shows the different countries that uh, the 20 countries that uh, represented the respondents, so you may take a look at that as well. The several questions were geared to prompt reflection on both the blessings and complexities of binational marriage and implications related to ISM. The open-ended questions permitted freedom in sharing their yielded, that yielded 25,000 words, and that's too much to put in this paper. Thus, only repetitious themes along with some expert, excerpts from the vast wealth of replies can be presented here. If you're interested in the complete unedited uh, replies, you may want to approach us to check it out. 52 pages, 25,000 words right here. Survey, question number one, uh, with summary responses and some of the sample excerpts. Question one, how have you grown through marriage with a spouse from another country and culture? Often cited growth areas included gaining awareness of personal blind spots, biases, and ethnocentrism for one's own culture, and at the same time, appreciation and respect for the spouses or other cultures. Better understanding of the contrast between non-Western and Western cultures, mutuality and learning cross-cultural differences and how to navigate them, communication and conflict resolution, flexibility, adaptability, and patience, realizing that while any marriage is cross-cultural, a binational union presents a 24-7 context for more in a cultural engagement and growth, dealing with in-law and dealing with in-law and extended family expectations from a different culture, being a better listener, etc. And now let's look at the excerpts of growth areas. I've grown by having to reevaluate assumptions and norms and being unable to simply recreate the patterns of marriage and family set by my parents and peers. It's helped me to experience what it is to love and to respect people who have a radically different perspective on some issues, even important issues. Learn to subjugate a natural tendency towards ethnocentrism and accept another culture as equally valid and valuable while realizing that neither are perfect. Thankful that a culturally heterogeneous marriage potentially affords an expanded and richer perspective of life and interpersonal dynamics than a culturally homogeneous marriage if one is humble and teachable enough to accept the gift of the differences a binational union provides. A binational marriage presents opportunities to grow and gain from the differences in it inherently brings on a continuous 24-7 basis. My wife, my life has two halves, the potato eating years and the rice eating years. My wife, being from a different culture, really a mix of many cultures, as her parents are also hybrid binationals, she could help me see things from different perspectives that I hadn't considered. I've learned in her culture that relationship is more valued and it's important to lift each other up when in public and not to criticize. It's easy to stereotype people from other countries until they become family. Specifically, because I'm also in relationship with the extended family, I have been forced to understand cultural differences and instead of discarding them as strange. I have learned to also see people in the broader context of their culture. I have grown to be more curious and to learn about my husband's history and family life. Instead of jumping to conclusions, I have learned to first ask questions and learn his context and why he does things he does. I've learned to celebrate our differences, accepting them is one thing, but learning to be grateful and celebrate is another thing. Grow to be more independent and confident. In my culture, often women are told to be, rely more on the husband. 
I have now a second home culture with values that I understand and can defend. My, hus my husband also has translated the things I observe about his culture and helped me understand the why behind what I see and experience. I feel extremely enriched as a person because I married someone from a different country. I have had to face many biases and work through them in a way I never would have otherwise. I have learned more about myself and my own culture by marrying cross-culturally. I have been educated in the, on the ins and outs of being from a developing country like my husband is from. I never would have intimately known some of the struggles and challenges students and families from places like his homeland face. I learned to die to myself a lot, to assess, assert my culture values when necessary and only when, not to be critical of the cultural values of the other when not necessary, and to laugh at ourselves in our differences, to accept them, and to find commonalities we can enjoy and celebrate. I have learned to share life deeply across a cultural divide without retreating into my comfort zone when it suits me. Whenever we argued early in our married life, I would retreat into the self-sacrificial -sacrif Asian wife mode of being quiet and enduring this in silence. I have learned to be more vocal and demonstrative, both about my love and appreciation within our family and beyond, as well as my opinions and feelings in general. I was brought up in a typical Asian family where communication is subtle, layered, and nuanced. Physical affection like hugs were rare, and expressions of love came in the form of food or words of concern rather than simply, I love you. We have established a hybrid culture of both our national cultures. Moving on to the second question, describe challenges and complexities you have experienced related to a binational marriage. Major issues identified related to language in which English is not the primary language of a spouse. To family and extended family responsibilities such as child rearing, filial obligation, and honoring parents and in-laws, to living in a distant foreign land of the spouse, and to cultural differences of everyday living, such as meals, cleanliness, and finances. These challenges and others are reflected in the following excerpts. Communication was the main challenge initially and is still a cause of frustration. Raising children with two different cultural backgrounds and upbringing is also a challenge. We have different expectations for the children and deal with discipline differently. Being there for family, especially aging parents, is tricky. We can't be near for both sets of parents. Norms for how to relate to the wider family, how much is expected and what it takes out of us, all these need to be negotiated. In the beginning, the challenge was that we found that our spouse could be rightly offended by us, according to their cultural norms, when we were trying hard to do the right thing according to our norms. Apologizing for doing the right thing was hard. Living in Europe can sometimes feel a bit lonely for me, but living in Asia will probably feel very intrusive to my European husband. Balancing my spouse's needs against my parents is quite hard from an Asian perspective. Coming from a direct and indirect culture, how we choose or not choose a conflict resolution style in resolving conflicts, reading between the lines for the direct person is not an inherent skill nor receiving direct feedback can be separated from being personally attacked, issue versus person, for the indirect person. In my upbringing, harmony held such a high value that it often trumped clear communication, which affected relationships or at times undermined someone's freedom to be themselves. For example, my North American wife needs data to make sense of what's going on between us or what is there before her but the matter at hand is triggering emotions of anxiety or anger. Shame versus guilt have influenced our marriage. Obligations in a collective culture versus an individualistic culture has been complex in my marriage. My husband's culture has a strong dynamic of obligation and mutual recipro reciprocity. As an egalitarian North American, I needed to humble myself and give up my value of equal status between people and learn to genuinely accept rather than tolerate. 
the honorific system of the Asian culture. I had to learn and accept the reality that I married into an extended family and its complexities. Even though we live in North America and therefore in the environment of the majority North American culture that cherish, cherishes individual rights. I became an Asian in the context of the Asian extended family I married into where I was the minority culturally. It's a challenge in my own culture seeing how my wife can so easily be overlooked and underestimated just because of her race and cultural reserve. Another complexity is the distance factor. No matter where we are in the world, one of us will never be close to family. While I think we as a couple are fine with this, I do know that both sets of parents would love us to be nearby. Deciding where to live in the world, financial strain of traveling around the world just to see family. Also, as we grow as a family, it means little vacation time is spent as just us since we take all our vacations to visit family. Our parents are very different in how they view parenting. Her parents can be pushy sometimes in how they tell us we should raise our son. Indirect communication can be interesting sometimes. There are unspoken expectations that are not always easy to understand. The main challenge I had to deal with was that European culture is more direct. In Asia, hospitality is very important, and one of the ways for people to show their hospitality is asking guests to keep eating and drinking alcohol. When we visited my country, my husband didn't really like it when he said no to my parents or my relative offering food, drink. They still keep offering and asking him to try. Making joint decisions by two people from different cultures require compromise and time to understand the other perspective. This sometimes leads to conflict and having a binational marriage doubles the normal stress of marriage because you always have to be aware of cultural differences and be ready to process and accept them. The main culprit, lack of awareness of how tenacious underlying cultural values can be. We were idealists before we decided to get married. We thought we would learn from each other and assimilate to each other's cultures. We later found out how hard it would be to accept, to adjust to, to yield to, to adapt to, to respect each other's values and tastes. We thought our commonalities, faith, calling, and goals in ministry, and our love for international students were strong enough to override these challenges but they were not as strong as we had hoped. Question number three. What are some lessons learned from it, that is the complexities and challenges of a binational marriage, that you can share in ministry? Occasionally share our cross-cultural differences in talks, Bible studies, to make a point of application, that is sharing stories of my wife's Buddhist grandmother offering sacrifices for protection against evil spirits. All our cultural blunders, misunderstandings, and discoveries make good stories over dinner. In many ways, perspectives from European culture and the European church have been very good for me, driven home by actually being married into the culture, able to discern foreigners who, with, um, with where they are at and not expecting them to be someone they are not simply because of my culture bias. A direct personal identification with others experiencing cross-cultural relationships and the dynamics associated with adjusting to another culture. I have learned important lessons of harmony and the need to set aside personal preferences and freedoms to honor those around me, especially my elders. If they say or do something you find hurtful, offensive, etc., don't rush to judgment. Consider the very real possibility that the problem is rooted in cultural differences or language problems. We tend to find wider acceptance across broad categories of culture. I fit into Asian context, my wife, my Asian wife into Western. It's like being a cultural translator and we can mediate the gap for others. So it is a bit of a bridge building marriage. Learning more specifically about my Asian culture through my marriage has directly impacted my understanding of Asian students. We already integrate lessons from our binational marriage in our ministry, using many of these lessons to help international students to adapt to life in Europe, while at the same time helping international student ministry staff and volunteers to be aware of some of the inherent inequalities in how we treat people, even in subtle ways. This has helped our staff to understand what international students experience. My Asian husband is another set of eyes on the world. We have multilateral vision, Asian, European, North American. 
We can become all things to all people and are bridge builders between East and West. Binational marriage is fun and, learning, and the learning never ends. Marriage and ministry are lifelong adventures. He has taught me a lot about the importance and beauty of the extended family. Please explain ways your hybrid into that transnational marriage and family has already been used in your ministry among the international academic community. For the sake of time, I will not read all the comments, but we'll just read a few so Leighton can proceed with the fifth question. Uh, it's easier to be open to make new friends and relate to people who do not fit in and to, those, to have compassion for those who are going through culture shock or feeling alienated. Almost everything we have been through can be integrated into ministry, from how we de dealt with our parents' disapproval of us as a couple, to working through challenges, complexities regarding unique backgrounds. There are always applications to helping university students who are also dealing with relationship issues. As a couple, we may be able to help another bicultural couple think through things ahead of time, ahead of marriage, that they may not have otherwise. Our home is a transnational bicultural home. So we offer hospitality as part of our ministry in a way which is uniquely a combination of Asian and European culture with other cultural influences thrown in. We've been told by students that hybrid transnational marriages provide a picture of how through the gospel, all are equal before the cross, and that our marriage and family life provide an example of that. Students are often curious about how we raise our children, make decisions, resolve conflict, or show honor to our family, and are comfortable asking those questions, giving us many opportunities to share. Being married to an international husband in North America gives me insight and insider perspective into ministry. Students often share with us negative feedback about ministry that they would rarely share with the ministry leaders. Students have referred to me as one of them. Having this perspective and insight helps me see the mistakes we've made in ministry and ways we could change it to be more effective. Cross-cultural marriage allows us to see the challenges of leadership and how white North Americans tend to get promoted into positions easier than minorities and internationals. My husband has been a minister leader for quite a few years, and still, some people do not take him seriously. So, different parents have talked about their children, how their children have been involved, and at the last paragraph on, I don't have a page number, oh, page 17, the last paragraph at the bottom of page 17, one of the parents of the binational marriage puts this final note. I want to comment here that it is critical that our children don't feel used in ministry as they look back as adults. It is imperative that we take an honest look at how, we, how they feel with the students, which can be tricky because kids want to please their parents and, may, and my stiff discomfort or senses of un, un, unsafety with certain people. When our kids were in their teens, we understood their feelings were changing towards our current students and they needed space from them as a family. We respected this and did less in our home. I'm glad we did. As our kids have launched into adulthood and as our life has hit some harder places, their childhood relationship with internationals were indeed healthy and helpful. And I have yet to hear from my children any resentment or regret regarding their students in our life as a family. And now I'm gonna go down to question number five. What biblical teachings and principles have taken personal meaning and application through your experience of a binational cross-cultural marriage, which you could share in ministry? God's heart for, heart for the nations. Jesus himself was a foreigner when he came on earth. Woman at the well is a good example of crossing cultures. Hospitality is important to us. The marriage of Boaz and Ruth would be a good place to start. She was an alien in a new land like me and was accepted into the community like I was accepted by North American Christians and found love in a member of the host culture like I received from my North American wife. The gospel can unite people from different nations pointing to the multi-ethnic nature of the church. Various passages then talk about when it comes to worrying about my parents as they grow older and far away in Asia or humility when there are times when I insist I'm right. And then Christ, in Christ we are all one. Dividing walls have been broken down, which includes culture and backgrounds, gender and ethnicity and race. Although living in a different culture, not to get absorbed by worldly uh, aspects of the culture. 
trying to have kingdom values in our life, example, Joseph in Egypt. So for example, North American dream is not something we want to chase after. Becoming all things to all people, trying to see things from the other culture's perspective, entering their world to understand and to learn. God's love for the foreigners in a new country. International students are a kind of Christ being welcomed. So many of the Bible stories are about people on the move. Help us understand that we will always be sojourners in this world, no matter where we are. And it goes on, and we're going to be uh, trying to wrap this up. Go ahead. While the inherent cultural complexities of a binational marriage certainly presents challenges and some clashes, the overwhelming sentiment of the 48 spouses responding to the survey is that the varied blessings of international mixed marriages, marriage enhances their ministry among the international academic community. One of the respondents even sent a useful paper which is already included in your notebook. Um, and lastly, we just want to conclude to say that we started as a binational couple and we now have a hybrid family. All our three children married cross-culturally and uh, we just had our fifth grandchild born two months ago. So from binational to halo halo, which is mix mix in Tagalog, here is hybridity at its best. 